Okay, so this is a pretty cool problem. Let's see. There's uh, this figure. So you have a rod over here that you can rotate. And so the rotation is going to exert some acceleration on this ball. The length of this string is L, and the angle with the vertical is theta. So the problem first ask us to analyze the forces, which essentially means draw the free body diagram of the ball. So we have a tension in this direction that is provided by the string, and we have the weight, and that's it. This angle over here is theta, which is the same as this angle over here. And then the problem um, tells us that the period is P, and we have to find how this angle theta, so you know how much it moves when you're rotating it, how much it deviates from the vertical. To find that angle theta as a function of the period, gravity, and the length. So we'll see. First thing that you have to do when you have a problem regarding forces is to draw your free body diagram. The next thing is to apply Newton's second law and remember that all the equations come directly from your drawing. So we look at the sum of forces in X and we have minus the tension sine theta, so this part over here, and that's it, that's the only force that we have in x, so that's equal to mass times acceleration in x, we do the same thing for the y direction, we have minus mg, and plus tension, cosine theta is equal to mass times acceleration in y. This ball, if it is uh, rotating at a constant angular velocity, is not going to be moving in the vertical direction. So we know that this is equal to zero but it is always changing its direction, so it has um, centripetal acceleration in, in x. So the centripetal acceleration is v squared over r, in this case R is related to L. We have um, this triangle, so R will be this one. And it looks a little weird, so it's better if we do it over here. We have L, and this is R, and this is theta. 
So R is equal to L sine theta. And we know the period will be the time that it takes the bolt to go around once. So it will be, if you have a circle, this is the diameter, this is the radius, then the circumference is um, pi times two times the radius, right? So that is um, let me get this right. Yeah, it's the velocity. So this is x. And the velocity, just leave it here. So then you can solve for the velocity. Put the period over here. And then we can take the square of this. So this is 4 pi squared r squared over p squared and then we can put the velocity over here the velocity squared to get the centripetal acceleration so it's going to be 4 pi squared r squared over p squared r so we get rid of this r and this r. And so the centripetal acceleration is 4 pi squared r over p squared. So that's good to know. We can solve for t from the um, forces in y equation. So if this is zero. So t is going to be plus mg over cosine theta. And now this tension, we can put it in the x equation. So it's going to be minus that times sine theta equals mass times the centripetal acceleration four pi squared r over p squared and r is l sine theta so we can get rid of the masses this problem does not depend on the mass we can get rid of the sine thetas. We want to solve for theta. So we can do this.
Yep, that's cosine theta. So if we take the our cosine of that. equal to theta. And we have this negative over here. But the sine function, the cosine function is symmetric about the origin. So if you have a a minus or a plus, it doesn't matter. So we can get rid of that. Or you can leave it. And this is the angle theta as a function of P, G, and L, which is what the problem wanted us to do.